Hello, I'm Brian Dunlop from Cabbig. Amazingly, this is the seventh Sunday after Easter. When we were young, it was called Whit Sunday, and it was exciting partly because the next day was a bank holiday. In fact, in medieval times, farm labourers had the whole week off to work for themselves rather than their lord. The name Whit Sunday is a contraction of White Sunday because white was seen as being symbolic of the Holy Spirit. For Whit Sunday is, of course, Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came down on the disciples. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit is referred to in Hebrew as Rauch, which means breath or wind. Our first hymn reflects this. It is, Breathe on me, breath of God. Let's watch a video about the day that God sent the Holy Spirit to the disciples. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues, as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each one of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. That version stops, very reasonably, with the disciples wondering, what does it all mean? Jesus had promised that he would send a helper and told the disciples to wait for its arrival, which they did. Imagine sitting there, not knowing what was going to happen. 
I tried to think what it would have been like in that room when it was suddenly filled with the Holy Spirit. The nearest I can come to is the moment I was ordained a priest. Usually the bishop places his hands on your head as you kneel before him. However, I'd just injured my Achilles tendon and I couldn't get up on the platform, let alone kneel. As the bishop placed his hands on me, it is the custom for other priests to put their hands onto your shoulders. But it's quite difficult to reach normally, and so usually only one or two do it. Because I was standing, people had their hands pressed against my whole back, and it felt like I was wearing a cloak of blessing. I remember feeling lifted up. I had a real sense of the Holy Spirit with me. However, some people scoff at the idea of the Holy Spirit, and that's what happened when our story continues. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man, handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. These days, if one talks to people about Jesus, they may think you're drunk, as the Bible stories are never heard in many families. Indeed, for some people, one might just as well be speaking a different language. But Peter's message is simple. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So let us pray. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, you can reply with, Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for listening years so that we can hear and understand when we hear about you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for our families and give thanks that we can now meet them and even have a hug. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we give thanks for those who care for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we ask for your blessing on those who we love and on those who we worry about. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We will say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We'll now sing our final hymn, Come Down, O Love Divine. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God, the Father Almighty, and his Son Jesus be upon you always. Amen.